We respectfully request the Sangha of great virtues for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma wheel to teach and guide us how to end birth and death leave suffering and attain bliss, and quickly realize non-birth. Kung den dai duk tang ten vi thu pha voi kam nhak thiết chung san Tình chuyến yêu pháo luôn nhau đau ngã mùng Như há liều sanh thỏa tư ly khu đà lạc Thất chứ vô sân how much of the blessed and noble and perfectly enlightened one? Namo Saranto Suche Do Ye Elahudi San Miao San Puto Sye. Namo Tarakta To Ya Da Ya Elahade Tamio Tambo Da Toa. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma in a hundred thousand million eons is difficult to encounter. Now that I'm able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom that thus come one's true and actual principles. Wu shang 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 wei miao fa bai chen wan jie nan zao yu wo ho jin jie wen de shou chi O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Great Master Ching Lang, Great Master Shenhua, O monks and nuns, O good new advisors, Amitofo. Chu Fo Pusa, 
净扬大师、师父、上人、各位出家人、各位上知识、阿弥陀佛。吉布古达，跟特丹论大师，我等跟我归的哥吧，各位弟子都感谢了佛。Okay, hello everyone. Today is the 16th of June, 2022. Uh, we are here and at the Dharma Treasury to continue discussing the prologue to the Avatamsaka Sutra as prepared by Master Ching Liang. We are on his door number two. Uh, thank you all for coming. Slide number seven. Okay, first of all, this is the last uh, Dharma speaking event for our summer chi. Uh, so, uh, uh, the, although our schedule is uh, for a Dharma lecture, this is part of the uh, slightly modification we made to Master Shinoa Chan Chi Dharma. That is, we want to give you both instructional talks, uh, more particularly learn from him while we still have materials, and as well as uh, getting a deeper level wisdom uh, to combine it with the Chan knowledge, Chan instructions in learning about sutras. It was a simple reason that when Master Shenhua explained his sutras, he was able to do it uh, at a very compressed period of time where he had a lot of uh, people uh, in his temple, mainly primarily for the residents of his temples, uh, those who stayed there. And we can't do that because you don't have that kind of time. So we try to explain sutras on weekends or as often as we can so that you can uh, be exposed to the more profound principles of Buddhism that's uh, necessary for your future development, okay? Um, and so that's why we're doing this. Uh, so however, tonight is since it's the last uh, time we get together and talk about things uh, uh, for the summer chi here in Dharma Treasury, uh, feel free to ask questions or, or do make comments or and so forth. Uh, that you feel you were like asking, okay, uh, about anything at all. So to start with, and you, you don't have any questions, I go and continue in my schedule of lecturing on the uh, prologue. Uh, all right, YouTube has a question. Go ahead. From Gold Forest Daniel, Master, as part of our practice, we should be aware of our Dantian at all times throughout our day and not just when crossing our legs. If you can, yes. Uh, the reason that you taught to go down to the Dantian uh, uh, when you meditate is to help you bring to a single point of focus that will uh, tend to minimize your thinking. Mm -hmm. So you get your attention away from the top part of your body, the head, and where all the thinking occurs. So when you go down there, so it tends to minimize your thinking mm -hmm. and give you a point of focus. So if you can during the day, sure, you should do that as well. Uh, but don't forget when you're working then to focus on your work, and then when you don't have to think uh, to make a living, then you can go back to your dandian. All right? Any other questions? Yes. Uh, three. Master, a few years ago at the, the Relic Exhibit, I made a wish I wanted to be able to follow Master's instruction, but up to today, I couldn't do it. I was told it was my fault because I never specified when. So I'm wondering, is there anything I can do so I can achieve this goal sooner? Anything you can do. Uh, you need to do two things. 
You need more blessings, create more blessings. Number two, you need to stop destroying your blessings. And because it, it starts with that combination. If you create blessings, you know, this, on one hand, you destroy blessings. On the other, you basically are shooting yourself in the foot. That's all. All right, you too. From T.S. Geppetto, the other day I noticed a kind of dark cloud coming over me. It had a distinct gnarly feeling. I recognized it as the backdrop to which all the bad stuff would come into being. And the mood the backdrop gave would have the ego feel that any bad action undertaken would be acceptable. I believe thanks to Chan, I could just sit it out and the cloud after one hour was gone. I recognized that at times before I could recognize this cloud of mood too, but would get carried away by it into doing unwanted things. This small victory was very refreshing. Very good for you. If you're aware of things happening, that should be a lot more uh, uh, acute, a lot clearer when you meditate. So that's normal. However, uh, don't uh, look forward to it, and if it happens, it happens. Whatever happens during the Chan meditation, you need to endure. That's all. Uh, don't look forward to it. Don't get excited because you were able to do that. Uh, and besides, just like everything else, you know, there's always ups and downs in life. Sometimes it's uh, nice, sometimes it's unpleasant. That's the way it is, and that's what makes Chan uh, interesting, okay? Mm. It varies, just like life, okay? That's how it will help you better prepare uh, for life. My interest is actually, I'm very pleased that I noticed that uh, quite a few of you have been uh, practicing hard and have taken um, advantage of this uh, Chan Chi here during the summertime, whether it's here or whether at our various uh, uh, locations, uh, branch temples, uh, this is for you, meaning that um, we put on, we create these events uh, to help whoever wishes to take advantage of it. So I'm very pleased that some of you are coming and taking advantage of it. Uh, so. Uh, because uh, invariably, all the people who've been able to survive the tests that uh, were at our temple, uh, our temple, when you come to our temple, to be honest with you, you have to undergo a lot of tests. Uh, and it's very, the tests are increasingly more difficult. You can never assume and, or take for granted that you, know, you are safe uh, because of the nature of progress. Uh, you cannot progress unless you pass a test. Similarly to when you go to uh, take classes, uh, to pass the class, you need to pass a test as well. Uh, so uh, so uh, you, uh, uh, the, um, the tests uh, are uh, a lot more of common uh, than you think. And, and uh, so I'm very pleased that many of you have been able to uh, hang in there. And that's uh, one sign that you're able to pass the tests, meaning that the tests, eventually, if you fail the test, you quit. You walk away, OK? Uh, for whatever the reasons. Uh, the one famous example we've been witnessing from Korea, for example, is from a uh, princess. Hmm? Uh, she went through a lot of public tests, uh, and uh, somehow she survived, okay, public. Uh, and and that's, uh, that's, it. that's the way it is with uh, all of us, whether it's you or me as well. I also have to survive my tests as well. We all have to undergo tests. 
and the more difficult the tests, uh, the quicker you will improve. Hmm. So, regardless, you all, you know, I'm fascinating. It's more interesting, interesting for me now because I find myself uh, uh, looking at people, group of people who are at such a wide uh, disparity of levels from low to high. And it's uh, rather interesting to see how you're able to come together and practice together. And I'm very pleased with that. So the way to get our attention is to work hard and to execute and to apply yourself. Okay. And uh, furthermore, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased at the progress that my uh, disciples have been making, whether it's lay people and it's left home people. Uh, the one rule of thumb, okay? Uh, you fail the test when you quit. That's all. It's only one measurement. Are you going to quit? All right, any other questions? Yes, Wei Mountain Temple. Hello. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that, Master. Um, I just wanted to um, say uh, a comment. Um, normally, when we have Chan Chi, especially, oh gosh, even winter or summer, I always try to take a, a week, usually the last week of Chan Chi, and take advantage of that time. And this time, um, I decided instead to give the time um, not to myself, but to my husband and try and spend a little more time with him. And um, I, was, I wasn't I was as disappointed as I thought I would be. I mean, I, I, I rather enjoy having the time to um, be by myself and I work on my um, my skills that I, I'm trying to develop and um, my cultivation. Um, but this this time, I felt it was important that I um, I stick around the house. Too many things going on, um, too many house projects, and it wasn't really fair to my husband that he had to deal with it all on his own. So. Um, I, I almost didn't tell him about it, but then when I finally said that I decided to stay home so I could also um, be with him a little bit more, he was really very pleased and happy that I did that. So I'm glad I did. Um, and I still tried to put in a few hours here and there. Um, but I, I, I feel like, um, I guess this is also part of cultivation. Yes, uh, our training program is quite, actually, our cheese are quite different from Master Shenoi's cheese and his temples. It's because I decided to do it this way. Yeah. Uh, because my focus uh, is different from their focus. Their focus is the traditional Chinese uh, cheese where you grind it out. Okay, there's a uh, there's a time when you drop everything, you grind it out, and, uh, and hopefully you get somewhere. Uh, and that's fine. That's fine. It's a good tradition to have. It is fine if you have no good, no advisor. So it seems to me that he geared his uh, Chan Chi. You know, when I first started, he was on his way out already. I, he let me shave my head, and then he died within four months, like five, six months later, four, four to six months later, um, more like four months later. 
And, uh, and I was uh, actually very uh, distraught by that. I was, uh, was in a crisis mode. Uh, and I was told uh, from uh, his teachings that his disciples replaced him in training us uh, new newcomers. And so I stuck around. Uh, but but um, it seems to me uh, that So I, I learned enough about their, their process of uh, training, and I found that uh, uh, after all these years, I realized that maybe in a way, he prepared for uh, them to grind it out. Because for whatever the reasons, uh, they really don't have any spiritual guidance at all, okay? Uh, and. And so, uh, whatever the motivation, whatever the reasons, whether excuses, none of our business. I, fi I find that if we continue in that fashion, it's rather inefficient. It's not a good use of your time because most of you, let's face it, how many of you can afford to take a week off, seven days off, and, uh, uh, and then come and, uh, without any distractions? Uh, and so, that's why the training has to be available or during those phases for those of you who can make it great, like my sanghans um, or people who have a chance to make it, that's fine. But there but it also needs to be flexible enough for you to be able to come on a shorter duration, okay? And so uh, that's why the only way to do that is through certain teaching, okay? Meaning that there's a secret behind the certain teaching that is totally different from the grinding teaching which, uh, that, uh, that uh, they practice uh, because uh, I'm still alive, so you should take advantage of it, okay? And whereas over there, we, we are, are uh, groping in the dark. We have no idea what we're doing. Okay, we have no one uh, can tell us what to do. And Master Shenhua's tapes are basically uh, general information. Uh, it will not help you solve your problems directly. Okay, that was a frustrating part for me for, uh, throughout four years. So those are the things that uh, motivated me to modify the Chan Chi format to make it more Americanized instead of Chinese style of grinding it out. And that is fine. And the Chinese style of grinding out is fine. And it's, again, it's tailored, geared towards, more similar to the, uh, the Son Bang, the Korean system, they grind it out as well. So it's a very traditional way of training people, a very, very traditional way of practice. Uh, but uh, I find that uh, that's, uh, when you do certain teaching trainings, uh, it's, uh, not that important to grind it out for seven days, okay? So it's a different format for us. So in your case there, uh, this is, uh, if uh, that's all the time you have for the, 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 the cheese in the summer, that works as well. So it's not necessarily, uh, not necessarily to grind it out if you cannot find the, uh, opportunity to do that, it's okay too, okay? Mm. So it's more, it's more uh, in the, along the line of according with conditions. If conditions are appropriate, come and grind it out. You get more out of it. You can't, you still come as often as you can. Do the best you can and, 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 um, and train, okay? It shouldn't be that you say that since uh, I cannot commit a lot of time to it, I should might as well drop out and just do something else. You try the best you can, okay? It's an opportunity where, where, where are you gonna find uh, instructional talks every night, okay? It, uh, a place where you can come and, and practice uh, for whatever time, for however long you have, okay? So this is, uh, all for you. So take advantage of the best way you can. Okay, yes, seven. Hello, Master. Uh, actually, I was thinking about similar thoughts as Wiki. Uh, 
I also was going to comment that um, so I didn't really uh participate much or at all this Chanchi uh events right here uh, but then because of you know obligations, home or work, um, but uh, I felt like I learned quite a few things uh, through the uh, just. A few things must have said here and there during the talks. Um, it may be just a fact there's Chan Chi happening. It felt like uh, there's some kind of cultivation happening for me. Uh, and then, yeah, I feel very grateful that for Master and Sangha that you are uh, putting up those talks every night. Um, that's been really uh, wonderful. So, thank you. No, you're welcome. Uh, in fact, when I do these things, I also have my own measurements. Okay, uh, I'm still doing it because after all these years, uh, I notice actually it's, uh, we're getting uh, better and better at it. In a sense that more and more of you are improving. Uh, and more of you are more and more of you are being able to take advantage of it, okay? Or more and more of you have been able to continue to build momentum, okay? It's not the way you think. Uh, certain teaching is not the way you think. Not the way that uh, uh, all of you low lives think. Is it okay to call you low lives? I'm tired of calling you stupid. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's uh, it's 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 not the way uh, that I don't think when I I I looked at uh, the way the Master Huineng taught his disciples through the Six Base Track Sutra, or when he taught me, is not how it's it's uh, it's uh, that's how you train people. Okay. Uh, yes, you need the grinding, but you the the part of the grinding, uh, the grinding must be accompanied by the certain teaching. So please don't misunderstand me. You need to grind it out. You need to apply efforts. You need to try your best. You need to go all out. Then uh, you'll be able to take advantage of our uh, uh, certain teaching training. Okay. Uh, but uh, but. Is no need to me. Is no need, you know, to go seven days or whatever. And you say, because the Chinese, when I learn about this Dharma, the Chinese, as Master Shewa in particular said, the body changes uh, every seven weeks and uh, seven days. Excuse me. Okay, and therefore you need to go through the cycle of seven days. And I misunderstood it as you need to apply effort for seven days continuously. No, not at all, okay? It's better you can, because then it speeds up your progress. But you can't, it's okay too, okay? Just try your best, that's all. Take advantage of it while I'm still here, okay? While I still have interest in teaching you. One day when you stop trying and get bored of this, I might do something else. Okay, because life's too short. Okay, have some fun. <laughs> YouTube, go ahead. Um, S K Y Gu. Uh, hello, Master Yonghua. I have a question about how to practice according to conditions. I have recently completed my university exams and encountered with computer problems during exams. My dad scolded me for being careless and not planning ahead, but I'm worried if this kind of planning and obsessing would be considered as scheming. Computer problems? What kind of computer problems? It's not scheming at all. Uh, scheming, uh, when you use the word scheming in English, it means that you are using uh, tricks, uh, 
uh, in order to pull wool over someone's eyes to your own benefit. That's how I understand the word scheme. The scheme is that you're really doing an underhanded way to benefit yourself at the expense of uh, someone else. Okay. Mm. And if you are planning for yourself, it's not scheming at all. It's called planning. It's called investing. So it's okay. Don't be obsessed about it. Yeah, you need to make plans for your own future. Just like everything else, you need to invest. You want uh, the investment to invest is to mean uh, that your planning horizon is long enough so that you can uh, reap the long-term benefits, not simply look at the short-term benefits. Okay? Uh, that's, I wouldn't call that scheming at all. Anyone else? Great. Then we solve all your questions. Uh, all right, let's go back to the prologue then of Master Ching Liang. Uh, it's door number two, uh, stores and teachings containing it. Uh, we are talking, talking about the, the, uh, uh, the Vinaya store. Uh, uh, this is uh, um, Vinaya is, uh, is, uh, also means uh, Shila. Uh, and uh, Shila means that you're leaving the uh, heated afflictions, which is the cause. Uh, and therefore, when you take away the cause, then you avoid the effects. When you are when you have afflictions, the afflictions are called heated because what happens is that when you have afflictions, uh, your body uh, is uh, warmer and hotter than otherwise. Okay? Uh, so it's like the engine is turned on, your car engine is turned on, so it produces heat, it generates heat. Okay? So that's what happens to afflictions. Afflictions, when you have afflictions, you are creating heat for yourself, okay? And because you are uh, being apart from the afflictions. Uh, that's why you, when you have afflictions in particular, and you can stop putting an end to those afflictions, you actually are cooling yourself down. So that's why it's a, there's a coolness effect, okay? What about clear coolness, okay? Clear coolness refers to the fact that, mm, that mm, not only are you cooling down mm, okay, uh, with uh, the reduction of your afflictions, with your uh, getting rid of the afflictions, you also have a clearing effect on your head as well. That's very critical for us. Uh, it's very important during the day and during our lives, uh, to keep a clear head, okay? Because when you're afflicted, your head is not clear. When you're scheming, your head is not clear. When you're plotting, your head is not clear, okay? Uh, and, and especially some you low lives who are plotting and come near me, I can, I can, I can see that you know, your head is not clear at all. You're so repulsive, by the way. Okay? But that's what you do. That's what students do to the professors, right? Remember? We went to colleges and universities and high schools. We all try to cheat our professors. Okay? Uh, and the professors have to be trained to deal with that. And they actually are turned off by that, but that's part of life. Okay? Same thing here. Same thing. Uh, you, uh, when you come near your good advisor and you're scheming and you're plotting or something, uh, uh, you are, you are you're not uh, impressing anyone. You're shooting yourself in the foot. Jewel Conk, go ahead.
네, 단톡방에 올라온 입진 조성님의 질문입니다. 영화 선상께 질문 드립니다. 어제 질문에 대한 답은 잘 이해했습니다. 감사합니다. 1번. 오늘은 출가에 관해 질문 드립니다. 한국에서의 출가는 여러 조건이 충족되어야 합니다. 그래서 출가를 하려 해도 조건에 매여 못하는 경우가 많습니다. 미국에서의 출가도 조건이 없는 것은 아닐 것 같습니다. 출가의 조건은 무엇입니까? 2번. 이러한 조건은 고타마 부처가 제자를 받을 때는 없던 조건이 아닌가요? 그 전에 부처님들도 물론 제자를 가려받진 않았다고 생각합니다. 이렇게 조건 부처 제자를 받는 것이 합당한 것인가요? 감사합니다. 오늘 질문에 대한 답은 잘 이해했습니다. 첫 번째, 첫 번째, 첫 번째, 첫 번째, 첫 번째, a uh, leptom person we in korea there are several conditions uh, to become a monk is there some condition in america and the second question is that at the time of buddha uh, there must be some condition in buddha's time so could you explain about that certainly um, let's see. Who is this? Ip Jin Cho Song Jin. Okay. Ip Jin. You know, you know this person. Okay, he's a good person. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, I don't know what happened in the Buddhist time or in the other temples, I have to be honest with you. I, uh, the only exposure I really have is Master Xinhua Sangha and the Chinese system and a little bit of the Vietnamese system. Uh, uh, and so my view is pretty limited, okay? Uh, whatever, however, uh, uh, what I do is quite different from what they do as well. Uh, in our Sangha, I'd like to call it American Sangha, uh, American Mahayana, uh, American Mahayana Sangha, uh, meaning that uh, we have uh, our uh, different, different criteria than, let's say, the Asian Sangha, if you will. Okay? It's probably uh, would be fair to say this is the first time we have such a, a thing, such a standards in the United States, because so far it basically it's Asian Sangha, whether it's Hinayana or Mahayana. Let's face it, Hinayana Sangha is from the East, okay? Uh, Tibetan Sangha is from the East as well. Uh, uh, so it's all, you know, all there, okay? I'm not affiliated with any of them, okay? Even though I have a chance to be affiliated with the Vietnamese Sangha and whatever Sanghas and so forth, associations, I never was interested at all. Maybe because the condition was not conducive for me to do that. So that nowadays, okay, I have a chance to uh, organize a Sangha as I see fit instead of having, like, uh, in the past, uh, the successors of the, the uh, various organizations have to deal with the inertia from those disciples who are devoted to the previous uh, master, okay? And they, they, they created a lot of merit and virtues. They supported uh, uh, the common master, and therefore, when the master is gone, uh, the successor need to take that into consideration. Okay, so they need to accommodate the old disciples, you will, because they're the one who contributed to the Sangha, they con contributed to building temples and so forth. Okay, I don't have that problem. I can start from scratch. Okay, uh, and so I'm glad you asked a question. Uh, my, uh, my requirements really are really not specific at all. Uh, it's about you, well, he said, if you want to be a part of our Sangha, uh, we welcome you with open arms, okay? 
However, uh, there are certain things, certain kinds of people that uh, I find it too time consuming to teach. Okay, I've done it enough right now. Uh, the last uh, 16 years, I have all kinds of people coming and asking to join our Sangha, whether it's, uh, it's, uh, it's from, from many different uh, traditions. And I turned quite a few of them down because I felt immediately that they would not be able to benefit. They would, would not fit at all, okay? <clears throat> Too much baggage, okay? So that's the first criteria right there. And when you come to our, uh, to our training program, it's not the way you think. It's not the way that you read about it from uh, the books or from your tradition, Asian traditions or you know, European traditions or Tibetan traditions or whatever. It's quite, uh, it's quite uh, uh, different, okay? Mm. And uh, we are... Uh, uh, we are, I, I, as I get older and I have less time, okay, my interest right now is to train as many people as possible to bring up the average, okay, while I continue to train on the upper end as well, because the upper end is what my master failed to train, so I have to do that, okay, I'll be honest with you, it's a big problem for Mahayana and my generation because of the lack of upper end. Okay, and if that happens again in your generation, it's going to be, you know, Mahayana will die. Okay, There's too much of a gap between Master Xinhua and my generation. Okay, and that has, it has to, uh, uh, it has to be fixed. So that's why I'm trying to fix it. So to make sure I train the high end, okay, the top end of uh, the disciples on the third generation of Mahayana, and as well as bringing up the average, okay? Uh, because uh, because mm, we cannot, and, and, and let's face it, the top of the pyramid is very, very small, okay? Uh, and I'm grateful, I'm indebted to many traditions whether it's Taiwanese, whether it's Vietnamese, whether it's Chinese, uh, whether it's uh, Korean and so forth, uh, I, uh, Thai and so forth, I am grateful f uh, for that. And, and therefore, I feel my way of paying back is to improve upon those traditions and adding something called American Sangha tradition. That's what we're trying to do, okay? so. I'm in a hurry, so therefore I become more and uh, more and more efficient in a sense I can spot after 16 years of looking and trying different things, different people, okay? I start with zero sangha, now I have uh, a good number of sanghas. I start with, uh, with some turnovers, quite a few turnovers and so forth. I learn and learn and learn. So therefore, uh, there is one thing that uh, you, as you come, uh, you have to be careful, okay? You uh, starting out at zero, I don't care who you are. You could be a genius, you could be a professor, you could be a Nobel laureate, you could be the richest person in the world, or you can be an official, you can have a lot of power, you can be the smartest person, okay? Uh, you starting out zero because because it's a different world. Uh, a world of enlightenment is an entirely different world. The world of spiritual world uh, is not the way you think, okay? So shed your luggage is the primary requirement. That's all. And we have a system now where you look around, people work very hard. Yes, they come in, you know, People who knew people come in and say, you know, what am I doing here? And they're in shock, okay? Uh, but, uh, but in time, mm, they understand uh, what it's about, okay? Uh, so, uh, so you shed your luggage, and number two, you don't quit because it's very tough, okay? Uh, and number three, uh, don't commit offenses. It's not the way you think. You're too stupid to understand. That's a reality. That's your reality. 
Okay? And maybe that's why Master Shinhua could not explain it to my generation because we are too stupid. Okay? Yeah. All right? And, and, and finally, it's about survival. It's very unglamorous. We are not selling ourselves. We're not trying to become famous. We're not trying to have more money, more disciples, more power, whatever. It's about you. Unlike uh, uh, our esteemed col uh, uh, colleagues in the other traditions, the other religions, uh, what we do here is for you. Everything is for your sake. Uh, the temple is for you, it's not for me. Uh, uh, every facility we have here is to use to train you, to assist you, okay? to take care of you, so that uh, in this third generation, uh, after I'm done here, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's next week, or whether it's next year, or whether it's the next uh, um, uh, 30 years, uh, you'll be taken care of so that you can continue to do your work, okay? Uh, we are subscribing to the ideal of, uh, of developing skills, improving ourselves in order to serve, okay? I don't subscribe to the old concept of Sangha as a, just some a group of people you put on a pedestal and, and you lay people are supposed to serve us. I don't, I don't believe in that, okay? Uh, I believe that we need to develop skills to be uh, useful to society, and that's part of the fun. That's part of the meaning of life. That's part of our contribution to society, the Sangha also must contribute to society as well. Okay, and those are the general guidelines. And the rest is you, well, because you, know, you, you just have to survive. Uh, because the many tests can be thrown at you. I hope it helps. JMT. Uh, one question. Uh, hello, Master. One question, one comment. Uh, uh, 첫 번째 먼저 질문입니다. Uh, 예전에는 음, 예전에는 음, 마스터의 인스트럭션이 있고 제가 열심히 했기 때문에 진전했다고 생각했습니다. 그런데 음, 그런데 그 이외에 그러니까 마스터께서의 상우스님 그냥 만약에 좀 그러면 제가 메시지를 드렸거든요. 네, 그걸 통역. 아, 아니, 아, 아, 상국수님 개인, 자, 다시 JMT에 올릴까요? 네네. 어, 예전에는 마스터의 인석션이 있고, 제가 열심히 했기 때문에 진전을 했다라고 생각했습니다. 그런데, 어, 그 이외에, 음, 마스터의 승가 제자들의 희생이 있었다는 것을 알게 되었습니다. 어, 저는 부채감이 있고, 이 부채감을 어떻게 갚아야 할지 그것을 질문드립니다. 사실 테스트도 테스트지만 이 부채감이 저를 더 힘들게 합니다. 음, 일단 먼저 질문할까요? 아니면 이어서 코멘트까지 할까요? 네. Master, before I thought I progressed because I worked hard. And I followed master's instruction, but I realized that um, there is a um, um, singa disciples uh, sacrifice behind that. So I felt uh, a lot of debt. So how can I pay this debt? I 
it makes me feel very uh, hard. The, the burden of debt. Ida, oh, Sang Su Ni, Ke So, um. 힘들다고 불평했던 저에게 말씀하셨습니다. 정작 여기에 없어도 되는 사람은 마스터를 비롯해서 몇 명뿐이라고 마스터께서 손해를 감수하시고 우리를 돕고 계시는 걸 잊지 말라고 말씀해 주셨습니다. 그것이 제가 지금까지 많은 고비와 힘든 점이 많았지만 포기하지 못했던 이유였던 것 같습니다. 끝입니다. 그래서 so when I complain, um, it's very hard. Uh, 상욱스님 told me that master told us to take a loss, and uh, master is taking a loss and helping us. So don't forget that, and that's why I didn't give up so far. That's all. There is no debt at all. You don't owe us anything at all. This is what we do. What we do is help as many people as possible, help as much as possible. Everything is to help all living beings. That's our mission, okay? Not to help ourselves, that's all. So you sh don't have to feel you owe us anything at all. It's not necessary, okay? If you feel that uh, you feel that you want to do something for receiving all this, okay? Then um, become enlightened, that's all. If you can't become enlightened this lifetime, make sure you go to the pure land. And that's good enough. It's that simple. Nothing complicated. All right, anyone else? You too. From Snow U. Hello, Master. This morning I was very anxious, so I decided to sit. In the beginning, there's something blocked my chest and I cannot breathe well. Then start to feel nauseous and very emotional. What should I do in such situation? Did you quit? Um, we'll wait to hear from her. A uh, comment from Jane. Salute to Master and his Sangha team for organizing the Fo Chi and Chan Chi. They have been working so hard. A special thank thanks to Venerable Shantong for feeding us. Okay, thank you for the input. Hmm. When you meditate, and you run into some problems and you cannot resolve, by all means, feel free to reach out to us and uh, we can help you. In particular, you can, uh, whoever uh, that, uh, that you've been taking classes from, uh, in whatever languages, whatever temples you've been to, uh, most of them will be able to help you. And if they can't help you, uh, they will consult with me to help you. That's, the, that's a part of our training program where uh, we teach uh, uh, by doing, not by talking. So, so just consult with, with them locally and, or your instructor and uh, this particular problem is fairly easy to solve. Yes, you too. For 20 minutes, and then I quit with tears. Yeah, uh, and that's uh, typical. Uh, you, 
in the future, uh, endure more of it, mm. and we'll get better. That's all. Mm. You need part of the first part of uh, the first phase of Chan training is you need to endure, or learn to endure, to be patient. Okay? Don't quit. So, meaning that, of course you'll quit, but uh, next time, uh, sit a little bit longer, endure a little bit longer, endure instead of 20 minutes, endure 22 minutes, 25 minutes, and so forth. Okay? Mm. And it will go away, it's nothing to worry about. Okay? And if it gets to be uh, impossible, then uh, talk to your instructor or talk to your local uh, uh, Sangan. Mm. It's fairly easy to help you. Okay? It's a good thing, by the way. When you meditate and you practice chant, you follow the instructions and you have problems, that's a good thing. Nothing to worry about. Endure it. Okay? And you don't understand, we can help clarify things for you. Okay? The more trouble you have in your practice, again, the quicker you improve. Nothing to worry about. You're supposed to get in trouble. You're supposed to encounter obstructions. That's normal. Okay? And um, again, I stress, endure it and endure a little bit longer, that's all. Wei Mountain. Master, uh, this Wednesday, I, uh, for the first time, was able to do a whole sitting in your, uh, following your time retreat schedule, just one sitting. When I stood up and walked around probably for the first time, I felt really, really good. And then I did a second sitting. In the middle of the setting, after about 20 minutes down, I uh, started to feel uh, and, then, uh, and then I felt cold. And then I hugged myself like I would normally do, and I did that. And then suddenly I remembered Master saying, don't do anything. So I didn't respond, react to the cold. I just did nothing with the cold instead of hugging myself. And then the next thing happened was uh, I felt really, really uncomfortable. So the next problem I got, I just, it just really, really uncomfortable, uh, nausea, cold, and hot. And um, I started to, to, to throw tantrum, uh, to make ghostly sound to um, get attention of Frances and harass her or get a fight with other people. I recognize that I actually went through that same state um, during the 40, this 40, um, three weeks ago, also on a Wednesday, I was able to also for the first time enjoy the 40 for the first time, and then right after that, pretty soon, I went through the same state. So, um, I got, so I, I noticed the patterns for me, for both the, when I did, was doing the 40 and the Chanchi, I don't know whatever that means, and I don't know why, what is that that I always have this ghostly thing, and feel really weird. Okay. Master, help me. Thank you. And that means that you have only have enough blessings to enjoy it for one sit. And then the second sit, your blessings run out. You have no more protection for your blessings. So you have to earn new blessings. If you struggle, it's a good thing. But when you quit, that means your blessings have run out. That's how scary it is. 
meaning uh, you may work very hard, you may have been, been planting a lot of blessings, but you don't realize as you practice uh, through these Gs, you, then you find out that it doesn't matter how many blessings you have, you will eventually will run out. That's how scary it is. Okay? So you cannot afford to be cocky and say, oh, I, you know, I have a lot. I have a lot in my, in my things and, uh, and have a lot of blessings. It doesn't work like that. You have to be humble that when you quit, again, I repeat, if you quit, in, when it sits as you sit for until uh, the, 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 the bell goes off and you quit beforehand, that means you fail because you don't have enough blessings. That's the bottom line. Okay? On the other hand, uh, if you encounter obstruction like breathing, nausea, and so forth, and you endure it until uh, the end of the period, until the next, uh, the next uh, phase, then and you are both creating blessings and fixing the obstructions that is trying to stop you. That's how it is. It's up to you. For you, those of you who are too smart, and say, you know, why do I have to do this? This doesn't make sense to me. Okay? Then you quit. Then you never understand why. But if you persevere, huh? then you have renewed your blessings, increased your blessings, fixed your problems, and when you're over the hump, you continue over the hump, and you're over the hump, and that's when you improve. It's that simple. Any other questions? Yes, three. Master, a few days ago, a hundred days train, there was a story about a king's mother told the king that uh, because she's practicing Buddhism and he's not, so she worries that their relationship will not be the same in the future. Master mentioned that all relationship come to an end. So does our relationship with the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas come to an end eventually as well? No, what I meant is that conditions will be, when condition arise, you probably get together. When conditions end, you part, and then you, go, you meet again. And that's how it is. That's how I, you know, when your blessings run out, then you have to leave, and because that's all you can harvest so far. But it doesn't mean that the relationship is separate. Anyone else? All right. So let's go back to the, uh, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, go ahead, Way Mountain. Master, um, when I'm in pain, I just like, I can't stop thinking help. You know, and like, I'm not, who, who can help me? No one. And it's like, I'm still searching for relief somehow. And uh, how do I just go to like, just like focusing on like just dealing with the pain instead of just like searching for like some type of escape? When you're in pain and it's unbearable and you want to quit, that's when you don't want to quit. That's all. You don't need help. You have to fend for yourself. You have to learn to fend for yourself. You don't learn how to fend for yourself. You don't get training to fend for yourself. You will be 
and you are a victim all your life. This is what worldly, what worldly people don't realize. They are good at dominating the outside world. They are one, they can be number one architect. They can be the best surgeon, neurosurgeon. But when it comes down to their own problems, I say this urge to do something stupid, like taking a drink because you're so depressed, because you feel so much pressure, they cannot help themselves. They are victims of their own desires, of their own urges. And that's why they're miserable. It doesn't matter, how, doesn't matter how much money they have, how much power they have. They're helpless. When it comes to time to face their own shortcomings, their own problems, their own weaknesses, they, cannot, they don't know how to help themselves. Now, such people, ordinary people look at them as success stories. Hmm? But when they go home, when the lights are off, when they go behind and then close the doors of their apartment, of their houses, of their trailers, they are victims of their own stupidity, their own shortcomings, and therefore they do stupid things behind hmm, the walls, their walls. They drink, they smoke. They indulge, they cheat, they lie. That's no life. So ordinary people gauge their success, gauge their happiness on how others perceive them, which is an illusion. For us, life is a lot more brutal. We look at our shortcomings. We fix one shortcoming after another. In your case in particular, you always are looking for help as a shortcoming. You have to fend for yourself. You always look for the easy way out because you're too smart. He said, I'm smart. I've always figured an easy way out for myself already. I figured everything out already. But here's a problem right now. Have you figured out a way not to quit? Have you figured out a way not to ask for help? Have you figured out a way to deal with your pain and discomfort? Because others have. And when they have, why do you think they're still around after 10 years, after several years, after one year, after 10 and 16 years? It's because they realize it's very beneficial for them. Look around you. Take them as your inspiration. Ask them, ah, what did you do? How did you do it? It's nothing to understand. Buddhism is very brutal. Our training is very, very pragmatic. Can you do it? Can you follow instructions? Can you not quit? The question should not be, how can I get help? That's worldly. The question should be, how do I not quit? like those people. You see, you think you, you always try, you're too smart, you try to figure things out. Instead of enduring, instead of, instead of trying to get a shortcut, get the easy way out, you have now 
facing your own shortcomings, you have to endure your shortcomings. So a very simple answer to your question, that is, if uh, you cannot handle the pain, okay, it's in the instructions already, endure it for another two minutes, whatever it takes, bite your tongue, burn your fingers, but endure it. Find a way to endure whatever it takes to distract yourself for two more minutes, for one more minute, for 30 more seconds. The next time, endure more, endure more, endure more, and you see why. You, don't, you can't do that. It's, not, it's not, no point for us to give you more instructions. That's a foundation. These are building blocks. You should all be so grateful, so happy that you are given the secrets of happiness, the secrets of being a superior individual, like the ones around you. Because with all the pain and the discomfort and the challenges, uh, trials and tribulations, uh, all these people hang in there because it makes them happier, truly happier. And makes them very special in my heart. doesn't work, you see. It never worked. But I don't quit. I keep trying. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Okay, and do more. That's all. That's a simple answer. Don't think so much. Don't try to take a shortcut. Be grateful that you're given the secret recipe. You have to do more. That's all. Do not quit. Set a goal that's challenging enough for you. Endure a little bit longer, a little bit longer next time, a little bit longer next time. That's all there is to it. Nothing to understand. It's about doing. Can you do it? And not quit until you reach that goal. That's how you conquer. And that's how you conquer your weaknesses. That's how you will eventually be taught how to overcome your weaknesses and become a better person. If you're depressed, eventually we'll teach you how to handle your depression. If you're manic, like that woman who asked a question just before you, okay? Eventually, if she doesn't quit, she keeps on practicing and grinding it out. She'll be taught how to handle her manic side. If she quits before that, tough luck, sayonara. Way bound. Thank you, Master. Uh, Do you want to say in Korean? <laughs> no. uh, mm. I'm so stupid. I don't have any wisdom, so I'm trying to follow your instructions. So, uh, the last Tuesday, last Tuesday or Wednesday, I, I didn't remember, but. I came to temple and I bowed 100 times and I the sit and meditate. I I don't know the what time, how how many time many how many minutes is it passed, but I feel felt very pleased. But suddenly I I, I don't know that this is a delusion or imagination or I don't know. But I saw some nice looking women. And at the time, I just only one thought or lies. Oh, let my husband stay with those women and he enjoyed the time with those women. And I, I want to continue meditate. So, 
So I just <laughs> meditate. I have a, so much peaceful and bliss that time. So I, my question is that kind of thought is it came from selfish mind or compassion about my husband. <laughs> Uh, can I, can I, can you, can I, can, I'm not sure. So you saw a woman with your husband? Yeah, I, 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 I the, I thought, I, I'm not sure if it's a delusion or imagination, I'm not sure, but I saw the, some nice looking women. Oh. And at the time, I only thought, oh, then my husband, stay with those women and have a good time with those women and I, I can continue to meditate. So, so I, I make it meditate. So I have a good time. You have a good time, okay. Yeah. So apparently Very your, your husband time. did too. So that kind of thought is came from selfish mind or Compassion. <laughs> no, that's called oh, happiness. Yeah. Honey, it's happiness. You're happy and he's happy. <laughs> so your happiness is catching. Grateful. <laughs> <laughs> You're not even jealous? Not at all. I can oh my continue God. to meditate so I enjoy time. <laughs> <laughs> You're not normal. <laughs> and special, of course. Oh. Maybe I bowed 100 times and then I said with plotters, that's why maybe mm. it happened, I'm not sure. <laughs> mm. 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 Okay, well, um, is that selfish or whatever? Uh, not at all, not at all. Uh, you, oh, if you, uh, if you feel that uh, you can make your husband happy that way, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I, if, it, if it were true, I don't think he would complain either. <laughs> now, are you jealous? <laughs> Anyone else would like to uh, 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 to uh, uh, give you input about this matter here? <laughs> no one, no one wants to touch this. Not even with ten foot pole. <laughs> You notice how peaceful she sounded? Either that or she's really delusional. <laughs> uh, that is meant by uh, clear coolness, no affliction. Okay? That's an example right there. That's called wisdom. Hmm? Okay, anyone else? You too. From Aqua Racer, Master, what is the connection between happiness versus suffering? We make progress in endurance, then we will be happier? Yes, part of learning about happiness is learning uh, uh, to, uh, to endure unhappiness. <laughs> because, because when we teach our people to cross their legs, they're very, very unhappy. Very, very unhappy. Am I, am I right? Huh? Yeah. When it hurts so much, you're very afflicted. 
and you're very unhealthy, you see? And this is why for the people who don't have blessings, they'll quit. They say, no, this doesn't make sense to me. But uh, it's not what you think. Uh, that's part of the training, the secret training, where that it, which has worked for uh, many people before you. Okay? Uh, it's uh, ingenious, if you will. It's, uh, it came from the sages' wisdoms. Uh, that's why they devise these things to help us, okay? Uh, to break through our own obstructions, our own inadequacies. So it's not about uh, words, it's not about concepts. So look around you. you know? There's no point in talking about happiness yet. It's just at this stage here, if you're asking that, that means you're at the starting points, the early stages. So now your real challenge is, is to, can you survive these, these uh, 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 early challenges? Uh, because those people who underwent this training program, many of them, for a long, long time, were able to attain great benefits, incredible benefits, miraculous benefits that we don't even bother talking about because it's theirs. We're not trying to, to make money of it okay, or benefit in any way of it. It's theirs. It's yours because you create it for yourself. I only show you how. I only give you instructions on how. It's up to you to do it. You don't do it, it's your choice. Go ahead, Conk. I'm beautiful, Master. Uh, 마스터를 꿈에서 좀볼수 있어서 굉장히 좋았습니다. 이건 그냥 사담으로 좀 드린 거고요. 어, 두 가지 질문인데 빨리 드리겠습니다. 첫 번째는 제가 이제 데뷔주를 뭐 운전할 때나 이렇게 하곤 하는데 직장에서 최근에 그 부딪힘이 있을 때 어, 이제 데뷔주를 뭐 드러내 놓고는 못 하니까 속으로 이제 하는 어떤 습관이 생겼습니다. 그래서 부딪힘이 있으면은 속으로 나 몰라 나 노래 이렇게 하면서 쭉 이제 그 회사에서 이렇게 하는데 이게 습관이 되다 보니까 운전할 때나 이럴 때또 속으로 하게 되더라고요. 그래서 질문의 포인트는 어 이게 속으로 만트라를 상황이 안될때 해도 되는지 아니면 가급적 그래도 바깥으로 이제 그 소리 내서 하는 게 좋은지가 이제 첫 번째 질문입니다. 여기까지 좀 처음에 여쭙겠습니다. Uh, last week I met you in the dream. So it was very good. So my question is, I have two questions. The first question is, when I drive the, when I drive the car, I recite the Great Compassion Mantra. And whenever there is a, some conflict in, between people in work, I recite the Great Compassion Mantra in silence. So I have the habit reciting mantra in silence. So is it okay to recite mantra in silence or is it better to recite loud? Yeah, silent recitation is pre preferable. Okay? Uh, don't, uh, when you recite loudly, people might think you're crazy and you're talking to yourself. they be worried, okay? So it's better to recite silently, all right? Uh, that's good. And sometimes uh, if uh, uh, the Great Compassion Mantra is too long, you can switch to, you know, other shorter things like Wanyin Bodhisattva or Medicine Master Buddha, Amitabha Buddha, and so forth, okay? 
And so be flexible. Like when you are in a, uh, under, under, under stress, you probably will find it hard to recite the Great Compassion Mantra. Okay? Then go back to the names. This is why we are learning so many skills, You're learning many tools you can use. All right, three more minutes. Final questions. Uh, 이 경전을 뭐 단음 못 외우지만 뭐 화음경이라든지 능음경을 이제 부문 부문 페라이즈 페라이즈 단위로 좀 그러니까 외우는 게좀 약간 습관이 됐는데요. 이런 게좀 이렇게까지 해도 되는지 도움이 될지 좀 여쭤고 싶습니다. 그리고 명상을 할때그 외운 구절을 이제 어 이제 관을 하거나 이제 암송을 속으로 하는데 굉장히 좋긴 한데 근데 이렇게까지 제가 할 필요가 있, 있, 있나라는 생각이 좀들 때가 있어서 그걸 여쭤고 싶습니다. And I also have a habit of memorizing some phrase in Apatasaka Sutra or Shrangama Sutra. So is it okay to memorize this some phrase? And sometimes when I do meditate, I contemplate those phrases. So is it necessary? What phrases? 어, 가령 화음경 같은 경우에는 그, 그 선화 선인이 강설한 그 십, 십인품 그 구절을 좀 암송을 하고 있습니다 최근에 그래서 무생법인품이라든지 어, 십인품 화음경 십인품을 암송을 하고 있습니다. Says I uh, recite the ten patients in the Abhatamsaka Sutra. What else? 능엄경 구절에서 그 오십 아 오십 마경에 나온 부분에서 일부 어떤 그그 어, 그 경을 읽으면서 오십 마장 오십 그 마경에 대한 것들 나오면서 그 좋은 구절들을 부문 부문 암송하고 있습니다. And some phrases in the Shrangama Sutra about the fifty-eight uh, demon. Fifty demon, not fifty-eight. Oh, this guy. You don't. You cannot add eight more demons. That's too scary. Okay. If you want to memorize things, uh, I would uh, recommend you memorize uh, some verses from the Vasha Sutra. They're extremely beneficial. Those sutras, those uh, verses, I don't remember. Okay, like. Uh, those who seek me in name, in form, whatever, is practicing a deviant way, okay? Or um, what is it? Uh, it has to do with bubble, uh, flash, light, lightning, and so forth, okay? Uh, there, are, there are three or four verses in the sutra that are extremely beneficial that you can memorize. I recommend you re uh, to memorize them and recite them. Okay, when you meditate or whatever. Another thing you could also do is the the ten uh, the ten uh, conducts of universal worthy that we have a section in the morning ceremony. First is to to uh, uh, is to bow and respect uh, all Buddhas. Two is to praise the Tathagatas. Uh, uh, three is to uh, uh, vastly cultivate blessings, and so forth. Okay, so those are those are very important and. They are quintessential Mahayana teachings. Okay? And you memorize them, you keep on contemplating them, reciting them, you, you create tremendous, tremendous benefits, tremendous, tremendous blessings. Okay? More so than the, uh, the ten, uh, what is it, ten uh, uh, transferences, whatever? That's really nothing compared to those, okay?
And if you're even more ambitious, uh, memorize, I would memorize the Heart Sutra. 256 Chinese characters. Hmm? Memorize them. Okay, I hope it helps. YouTube question. Two, two comments from Emily. I feel like I still haven't recovered from my beatings. I've been so exhausted since I returned to Chicago. When I was at DTT, I felt like I was get, getting beaten up daily by invisible beings because every day I had aches and pains in different places of the body. Those were addition to my tooth infection and tooth surgery. By the way, thanks again to Venbo Xianliao and Venbo Xianren for taking me to San Jose to the awesome dentist for the tooth surgery. Okay. <clears throat> the, the fact that you experience some uh, physical discomfort, that's a good thing. Okay? Uh, you're tougher than that, being a policewoman and everything. I don't call you policewoman casually. Police women are supposed to take a lot of, a lot. Okay? So take more. Stop complaining. Take it like a man. I mean, like a police woman. <laughs> okay? And of course, it takes uh, it's a while before you can recover. Uh, and that's a good thing. If you can recover just overnight, then you haven't worked hard enough. So stop whining, police woman. All of a sudden, the time is up. Now the questions come. What happened to all of you? This is a conspiracy. <laughs> You're doing this on purpose every single time. I'm whining. Go ahead, you two. From Cordelia, Master, please advise. I feel like I sit, and when I reach one hour and 45 minutes or two hours, I regress back to 20 minutes, and it's been happening every few months. I keep working it up and then regress again. It's constant. Ache and pain in back and legs. Normal? Yes. Endure. I know I'm very original. Just endure more of it. Keep at it. Okay? Have you heard of Atlas? <clears throat> Atlas was punished by uh, the gods, the Greek gods, because Atlas committed some boo-boos. So he had to... Um, uh, to uh, uh, put, uh, you know, to roll a big ball up uh, the mountain and then get to the top, let it roll down to the bottom and come, come down to the bottom and roll it up again forever. We're not asking you to do this forever. So keep it up, that's all. Jewel conch. Hey, 한국어 유튜브에 올라온 코멘트입니다. 박순희 순희님이 결과 부자를 했어요. 골반도 아프고 머리가 빠개질 것처럼 아파서 침 맞고 왔는데 지금도 머리에 열이 나요. 너무 스님 힘들어요. in full lotus and I have a pain in my hip and I have a headache so so painful so still so I went to the hospital but still I have a I have a heat in my head it's very difficult mm. you know, oh no you should stop meditating <sighs> Mm. 
What's the nature of the pain? Is there a sharp pain? Go slow, you know, if you endure, all you have to do is do a little bit more, don't overdo it. That's all. Okay, talk to uh, Master Z there and see uh, so that he, uh, he has a better idea on how to help you. Mm. Okay, uh, if you have questions, that's why, why we're here. Uh, if you, uh, uh, if you, f you will go to hospitals, it's more confusing for you. Okay. Mm. But uh, uh, if uh, they can't answer your questions, then go to the hospital. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, I know it's confusing when you practice, and it's not uncommon for me to go to different places when people practice. They especially our style of training is rather demanding, it's rather difficult. So, um, and uh, so that's why we make sure that we are, we make ourselves available to help you out, okay? Uh, don't worry, uh, don't panic, but don't overdo it, okay? Jewel Kong. She, uh, she answered, um, she has a body ache, and then she did a Shirangama mantra. Okay, the body ache is normal. When the body aches when you meditate, that means that you have a problem right there. You have a blockage right there. That's why it aches. Okay, if you were to sit longer, the blockages, those aches will go away. It will get worse, and they eventually go away. And that's how you heal yourself, without any medication, without any uh, external help. You learn to fix your own problems, and that's a good thing. You develop skills to heal yourself. No medication needed. All right, I think uh, time is up. We stop here tonight. Thank you all very much. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>